Welcome to Picture Book Chat, where we feature a handful of new picture books each month and discuss what makes them great. Whether you're a parent, caregiver, or teacher, you're bound to find some wonderful reading suggestions from librarians Mary Ellen Brax and Sherry Boggs. Well, hello. Welcome to Picture Book Chat. I'm Mary Ellen Brax, and with me today is Sherry Boggs. Hello. And we're back to talk about what new picture books we found this month. There's some good ones. There are. So I really like this first one. Go for it. Um, It's This Little Kitty in the Garden. I'm going to put this down here so you can actually see it. And this one is just a super cute one. It's by Karen (laughs) Univich, I think it is. Um, I was practicing that. I'm sorry if I butchered the name. My apologies. Um, But this is an adorable book that I think a lot of preschoolers will like. And it's great for um, for introducing spring and gardening. So I think this would be a fun one. I love the M papers with the <laughs> footprints on them. And it just talks about kittens going through a garden and kind of wreaking havoc <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it's Some rhyming. Great type. details. Yeah, great details where like the little kitten is eating the leaf, the expressions on the cat's faces are amazing, Uh, but it does have a nice rhythm to it. So, um, Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you've had some younger preschoolers, I think that this will definitely keep their attention. There's lots to look at in the pages, so it would work well individually or with a group, I think. And yes, and it just, as they're going through, they're getting all their gardener tools, and then they're finding all the plants. And just look, some of the faces are a riot. I just love them. Um, but basically, it goes through what they're doing and going through the garden, talking about pollen and all the creatures in the garden. Um, and they come up to a bunny. Um, and then they're planting, which is just so hysterical. Um, just some of the faces on them. I just thought that this would be a really fun one to use for a gardening unit. Um, And then at the end, they're kind of getting everything together in the garden. And amazingly, they are planting stuff because here they're training a plant up a little um, fence. And then the adults, the humans come in (laughs) and they've made quite the mess. And then they go through and they're gathering everything up together. And of course it ends with them. (laughs) In the flower bed or vegetable. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it ends with the little footprints going through the garden, which I think it's just a really fun one to use. I can, you could do a lot with this in terms of a gardening unit or Mm -hmm. spring unit. Um, you could count the cats on each page too, put kind of mathematize it and count different things within the book. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a fun one. I think it would be fun for story time. Oh, good with the group. Yeah. What did you think about it? I was really taken with the art style. Um, I was going to look it up and see if she used cut paper to make oh, these, yeah. um, or if it's just really great, like digital illustration. Mm-hmm. That yeah. it, because I noticed, like she even gets shadows in there. Yeah. It's really great. So I loved that aspect of it, mm-hmm. um, and I thought, you know, like even a little simple craft you could do would be like to take the construction paper and. You know, you can fold it a certain way and then fold the little corners down to make the cat ears. Oh, yeah. Um, and I noticed in a couple of them where the cats are concentrating, she's got their ears down like mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, you can make a little gardenscape and then put your little <laughs> cats in there. That would be a fun project for a classroom, I think. Um, yeah, and I noticed, like, you can talk about the different colors they are mm-hmm. and, you know, how some have stripes and some don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it had great vocabulary, you know, identifying mm-hmm. the things that you need to go out yeah. and garden. Some kids are fascinated by tools, so I yes. thought that was great. Mm-hmm. I love a pegboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the organization in this. But um, yeah, I thought it was great. I The language is simple, um, mm-hmm. but it keeps the story moving. Right. The cats are really engaging. Yeah. I um, love the bright colors of it. Oh, my like gosh. Yeah. Artwork, just, it's really eye-catching. Yeah. And she really, like, with such simple shapes, she really captures their catness. Yes. Like. Chewing on the plant. <laughs> 
<laughs> and just like the fluffiness of this one's tail. Um, yeah. I just, yeah, this is a great book for people who love cats and gardening. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a great one for spring. Yeah. So, yeah, I like this one a lot, Mary Ellen. Yes. Yeah, I thought that would be a fun one to read out loud. Mm hmm So that was This Little Kitty in the Garden. And then on the back, got the code that you can scan and takes you right to our catalog where you can put a hold on it. Great. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well. I know this one was your <laughs> But it's one of my topics, too. Oh, good. <laughs> so this is the Teeny Weeny Unicorn. Um, I keep calling it the Teeny Tiny Unicorn, trying to train myself to call it the right thing. Mm -hmm. Teeny Weeny Unicorn. First off, um, I love the art. It's got this look of past like oil pastels it's like really rich saturated colors the illustrator um author and illustrator is sean harris does some really great stuff like in some of the motion pages with this book now i can't find one but he smudges oh, yeah, um, when he's galloping oh it's so great like i just think that's such an effective use of of the pastels or whatever mm -hmm. he's using yeah. um so great but this is about like of course a teeny weeny unicorn um that lives in this beautiful castle uh, but for him it's extra large uh, the rugs were extra large the food was extra large you see him inside a taco you see him <laughs> next to a jack and like a little lego knight the toys and games too he's got two obnoxious older siblings which i think for some kids can be really relatable uh, because they're much bigger and they rub it in his face that he's little and can't keep up um his brother uses him as a chess piece um what does this sister do Oh, just says that he's too tiny to play. Yeah. Um, and I love that one of the brother's name is Prince Butterscotch. Mm -hmm. And I think reading this aloud, you could do some funny things with voices because he's just so obnoxious. Mm -hmm. Like you yeah. just picture going, captured your pawn, <laughs> braid yeah. Prince Butterscotch. Um, and so there they are. Um, he runs away <laughs> crying teeny weeny tears. <laughs> and here's the motion page that we talked about. Um, and then he gets confronted by this gnome, um, who's mad at him and insists that he crushed her little red sports car. Um, and he said, there's no way I could do that. I am a teeny weeny unicorn. And she keeps referring to the giant <laughs> and I'm not a giant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you see this page and, and it's all a matter of perspective. Mm -hmm. The gnome is really tiny in comparison to the teeny weeny unicorn. And to prove it, she's like, put your hoof in here and see if it fits. And it's a perfect <laughs> fit. <laughs> I and, love the expression on the face. <laughs> it's so great. And I love the scale of it. That yeah. It's just like humongous. And these clashing, like, <laughs> it almost hurts your eyes. But I, I just love these spreads. Um, so it's like, how can I repay you? The gnome climbs up on the teeny weeny unicorn's horn and says, giddy up. And so they're moving again. Um, they get back to the palace. And it turns out unicorns don't have a lot of use for money, and they're just sitting on hordes and hordes of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so they decide to give it to the gnome to go mm -hmm. take it back to where she lives. And uh, and it's a female gnome, by the way, yeah. um, and buy a new car with it. And so I love this. Like, the teeny weeny unicorn is too tiny to pull the cart, and so the older siblings have to do it. Yeah, fancy Annie and Prince Bird. <laughs> I think the names are great. Yeah. But the gnome keeps repeating that family's family. Yeah. Um, and so that was kind of a nice twist, I thought, that, yeah, the, your brother and your sister are pain, but family's family. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and sometimes they have to do you favors, yeah. like they do here. And then I love at the end, um, they talk about the perspective. We are all giant we're all teeny weeny like we're mm -hmm. all of these things at once it's kind of like we yeah. contain multitudes <laughs> we are yeah we are all teeny weeny we are all giant and we are all, all just, just the, the right, right size. size so i like the message of the book i do too and i love this page this reminded me of some of mac barnett's stuff like the sense of humor you know yeah. like um you know, we could talk about these other things that he did, mm -hmm. but that would be a different book. He had a great Again. adventure with the ghost in the North Tower. <laughs> it's just so random. Yeah. Um, so I, so thought... I hope there's another one with the ghost in the tower. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking this would be great with, like, kindergarten, mm -hmm. first grade. I 
it seemed kind of long maybe for younger. What did you think? I thought it might be a little long. And yeah. then I think, though, if you have like a four-year-old who's really interested in re- books and unicorns, I think this would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, but it would be for some a child that likes to sit and listen to stories. Yeah. I think the pictures in the book are great. Um, I think they could probably relate to a lot of it with being teeny tiny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> teeny. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be a nice one. And you can do some fun things in kindergarten. I mean, you can do some nice things with the math mm-hmm. perspective of being giant and teeny yeah. tiny. So you could do some things around sizes and maybe you could do unicorns in different sizes and you know, what else in different sizes or that perspective aspect. Yeah. I think could be fun, especially in that kindergarten and first grade um, age range. That could be a lot of fun. So, yes. And I mean, the the illustrations are just amazing in there. They're like so the great. That it almost looks like pastels. And, um, yeah. And I love the beginning of the book, too, because it actually starts before the book's begins where oh yeah time in a land where house horses were mythical beasts found only in the pages of books for children it was common <laughs> to see a unicorn but not one this size and then it goes into the title page oh it's teeny, got a teeny, prologue unicorn. yeah <laughs> prologue. i just thought that was that was really cute i hadn't seen that very mm-hmm. much in a picture book yeah but it's totally effective i yeah. love that mm-hmm. So it seems like you're entering a fairy tale Mm -hmm. as you go through, which I really like that aspect. So it would be a nice introduction to fairy tales. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think so, too, especially like with the castle and Mm -hmm. Prince Butterscotch and Fancy Annie. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I agree. Great. So, yeah, a really fun one. Yeah. So I knew you were excited about that. (laughs) I know. Thanks for letting me do it. (laughs) I know. I've been telling everyone at work, like, read the teeny weeny unicorn. Yeah. Um, so here's the ISBN so you can check it out or the code um, and put a hold on it. We just got these out to put on the shelves yesterday. Yeah, so it's awesome. brand new. In our quest to inspire the next generation of scientists, engineers, and innovators, the library offers a wide range of programs and resources on science, technology, engineering, and math, together referred to as STEM. For young explorers, our STEM programs ignite imagination and hands-on learning. Did you know you can design your own video game, code a robot, create a marble roller coaster, or try out exciting science experiments? Together, we make STEM fun. Your library also has STEM resources you can explore at home. You can check out books on great STEM topics and borrow cool stuff, like telescopes and exploration kits from our library of things. Unleash your creativity, foster innovation, and explore all that Spokane County Library District has to offer. We invite you to visit one of our libraries today. All right. What's next, Mary Ellen? Um, The next one is called Today. See, I'll get it right. (laughs) Go the opposite direction there. Um, And so this one written by Gabby Snyder and illustrated by Stephanie Gregan. And um, this one is, um, the end papers are beautiful too. Yeah. But they talk about memories and how you can take a really good day and you can always remember it. And so this little person is getting ready um, in anticipation for a summer vacation, it seems like. And so, yeah, it's just like you're counting the hours till you'll see Pop Pop and your cousins again. So it's all about taking a trip and having to wait and, you know, go through time. And, I mean, I love this. Today takes forever when your parents yak, yak, yak at the neighbors. <laughs> How many of us felt that at Sid, yeah. too? Um, again, we've got some beautiful illustrations in here. And basically, they go on this trip, and they get to do all sorts of fun things. It's on a lake, um, and they're having a great time and talking about, you just want to freeze this moment and remember it forever. And then it gets stunned by a wasp. (laughs) (laughs) And then, of course, but after that... You know, there's more memories. And so they see the fireflies. Um, 
and they're they're waiting for the anticipation. So again, you have to wait a long time until the fireworks Mm -hmm. pop and burst. And then it's talking about just those, you know, the best todays are shared. And they give you some examples of what that might look like. I love this spread. It's really gorgeous. Yes. Um, And I love the diversity in the book, too. And um, but they talk about a memory that you can visit again and again. And I thought Mm -hmm. that was kind of a nice message. It's not something you see all the time. Um, And when you get to the end of it, um, they're talking about breathing in and breathing out and thinking about your memory to make you happy. Um, And they say, and remember, today it's yours to keep. Which I think is a nice thing for kids to remember that mm-hmm. yeah, this was a good day. We can remember that. But at the end of the book, I really like it because she talks about mindfulness at mm-hmm. the end and um, talking about, you know, when you're tempted to go too quickly through something, how you can slow it down and do some deep breathing and what you can do if you're feeling a little anxious or worried with something coming up. So I thought that was a nice way to include mindfulness. And a story that was about keeping memories, too, so and not rushing through your day. Um, so, yeah, I thought, I thought it was really nicely done. So what did you think about this? Yeah, I, I love this one for a lot of the same reasons that you do. Um, like the concept of time, especially with preschoolers, mm-hmm. is kind of hard to talk about. Yes. And this talks about it in a way that I think kids, you know, younger kids can mm-hmm. understand, you yeah. know, how sometimes time seems to be. Mm-hmm. way stretched out it takes forever to get to christmas or yeah. <laughs> you know whatever thing that you're looking forward to yeah. um but other things you know like say you're at the fair or something it just seems to go by like right. that when right. you're having fun mm-hmm. the whole time flies thing um but i love this because it gives examples of like even throughout the book like the days that are going by fast there's so much sensory detail mm-hmm. you know about yeah. the way the water feels and like the taste of the root beer float foam and yes mm-hmm. you know i was assuming it was a float it might just have been regular root beer <laughs> wishful thinking um but just all those little details to notice and i think that kind of sets it up great for the end where it mm-hmm. talks about mindfulness cause, because a big part of mindfulness is you know noticing everything around you and like yeah. hearing the sounds and mm-hmm. focusing in on those details um, but yeah, I thought it was great. Yeah. Would you use it for a story time, do you think? I think I would. Yeah. Um, I would probably, you know, it would make great as a transition from spring to summer as you're anticipating summer and more kids. Yes. A lot of times they're, you know, they're going on a trip or they're going somewhere fun. And so I think that would help with that anticipation mm-hmm. and that, you know, it seeming like it's taking forever to get here. Yeah. So um, so I think it would help with that a lot. So I think it would be a fun one to use um, in a story time, preschool story time, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, yeah, it, might, it would be good to use, you know, as you, in a classroom when you're getting ready for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's <laughs> squirrely. <laughs> so you could even use it in maybe kindergarten, I would say. Kindergarten or first grade even. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you could use it in multiple ways. You could talk a little bit about what are the fun things to do in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and have, you know, so you could tie it in with the season maybe. Yeah. The season study. So, yeah, I think that would work really well. There were a number of ways you could use that. But. Definitely. Yeah. And the quality of the art, like you were pointing out, is just mm-hmm. amazing. There's so much warmth mm-hmm. in all of the illustrations. And I, I love the diversity of the characters in the book. And, yeah. And the detail, even you can see. Oh, yeah. The cover with the flowers, um, too. So, I mean, there's a lot to look at in this book, too. So you could really slow it down and take a look <laughs> at the pictures and, you know, ask some things. Well, what would you like to do this summer? What would, you know, what are some things that you like to do? Um, yeah. So, yeah, beautiful book today. And then uh, right. from the back, here is the coat. So you put it on. Hold. Excellent. Our last book is... The Last Stand, and this is written by Antoine Eady and illustrated by Jarrett and Jerome Pumphrey. We've done one of their other Mm -hmm. books on this, and that book was, like, really silly. This one is a lot Mm -hmm. more serious. Um, So this is about 
a farm stand. The author is from South Carolina, and I think Jarrett and Jerome are both from the South, too. Um, and so they're talking about a farm stand and how last year there were only two farm stands, and the year before that there were five. So, And this year there's just one, and that is the little boy's dad, Earl where they sell pumpkins, peppers, plums, and eggs, which I just love the alliteration mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. And so you see everybody lined up, and you realize, like, the farm stand is still really important to this mm-hmm. community. Yeah. Um, so they show them every Saturday. They harvest. They get the peppers, plums, and pumpkins, and he collects the eggs. <laughs> I love this chicken yeah. <laughs> outline here. Um, they gather everything up in baskets that Granny made from sweet grass. Um, so I just love that natural detail and mm-hmm. that this is a generations old operation. Papa's hands are black and wrinkled, and each wrinkle tells me a story. If anything broke, Papa fixed it. If a sign needed holding, Papa held it. Um, so I love this spread kind of about responsibility mm-hmm. and hard work, you know, yeah. and how even if you know, Papa isn't saying anything about the importance of hard work. It's all right there in everything mm-hmm. that he's doing. And he, this little guy is taking note. So they go to the market. Um, they've got their regular visitors. Ms. Rosa uh, sorts out her usual. She gets orange pumpkins and fresh white eggs. Um, here they've got the peppers. I love that you've got, like, the colors that you can identify. Um they're saving stuff for him, like, this guy's waiting for the peppers. Yep. <laughs> um, but at night, the day isn't over. Like, they close up their stand, and then they drop off plums to Mrs. Brown's, Mrs. Brown, where she's waiting up for them. Um, so I love that, like, you know, that they have customers, you know, and some can't make it to the market, but they can drop stuff off on the way home. Um, so I just love this kind of snapshot of a day in their mm-hmm. life. Um, And I love this page where they're driving home and the stars are in the sky. Um, The sky is black as only a town without streetlights could be. Um, I love that the windows are down. Like, you just feel like you're kind of there. And so they do this every Saturday until one day Papa's feeling too tired. And so the little guy decides that he's going to do it himself, but he's trying to do it on his bike. The plums fall out. (laughs) There's no room for the pumpkins. (laughs) Um, you can see like his abandoned produce on the road. Um, so he does it again the next weekend. But then he figures out a way. It's great problem solving in this book where he, fun- he uses his wagon. Yeah. To bring everything so that everybody gets what they needed. Yeah. And it's subtle. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't think I even noticed that when I was looking <laughs> at it. You know, I just figured like he keeps mm-hmm. going and. Yeah. Um, so I like the perseverance there mm-hmm. too. And I love this. They um the people that he that have been his regular customers have stuff for Papa that yeah. the little guy's gonna take home in the wagon. There's candied plums, stuffed peppers, pumpkin pie. Um, so again, like I love that sense of community yes. and caring for mm-hmm. each other. Yeah, and he's dropping off fresh plums and she's giving him canned like plum jam to take home. And here they have like this great harvest feast with all the good stuff that they grow. And then there's an author's note in the back and talking about the importance of um, farm stands in the South. And there's some history in there um, that in the 90s, black farmers filed class action lawsuits against the USDA um, because of discrimination. Like they, the white farmers were getting advantages that the black farmers weren't getting. Um, And so they just talked about the importance of that. And I think here in the Northwest, like, when I think of a farmer, I just think of old white guys, like mm-hmm. like what I grew up with mm-hmm. and like what, you know, my grandparents did and stuff. So I think it's important for us living in maybe a not as diverse mm-hmm. community, like to realize, you know, that in other parts of the world or parts of the country, like the farmers might look a little different, but it's the same basic work. And it's really important to communities to have that. And even the farm stand, I think, is interesting because I think here we have farmers markets, um, but like a big, long building like this with like the doors that you mm-hmm. open and close. That's not something we see as much here. Yeah. And being from the Northeast, too, we would see a lot of farm stands around where local farmers would have mm-hmm. their. Um, and it wasn't until um, I was an adult that the farmers markets came about there. So, yeah. Um, so, Yeah. Um, 
And we always love stopping at farm stands because mm-hmm. that's where we get the best. Oh, my gosh. The best produce. It's good so, stuff. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, just talking about farming in general and um, and just pointing out that um, black farmers just had a harder time with it and mm-hmm. that there aren't that many left anymore. Um, yeah. So, um, so this was nice from a historical perspective, a part of history that I wasn't quite aware of, which I thought was great. And I thought the story was really good in terms of that whole community aspect of it. Too. Definitely. And so they, and the fact that, you know, they were going out of business slowly, mm-hmm. slowly, because they couldn't keep up their farms. So Yeah. And using the example of like the next generation kind of picking it up mm-hmm. and carrying it forward. I, yeah. I just got goosebumps. Like, yeah. I just think that's such a beautiful concept Yeah, that this book does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I love the story. I mm-hmm. I love the illustrations in it. Um, and so yeah, I think that you could use this in a number of different ways. Um, for some of it, it might be older preschool, kindergarten, first grade. Is yeah, what I was thinking for this one. Um, it would be a great story, like one on one with kids, and then you could you know even read the author's note too and talk about that. Um, So yeah, I thought I had a lot. It was very good. I really enjoyed this story a lot and learned a lot too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a quieter kind of book, Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's really thought provoking and just really well done. So that was The Last Stand and you can place a hold on it. All right. Another picture book chat in the can. (laughs) Great job, Sherry. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I really enjoyed them. Well, thank you for joining us for the picture book chat, and we'll see you again next month. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you.